Hello there, are you making these mistakes that could be costing you sales and revenue? And I mean a lot of sales and a lot of revenue. I've discovered after coaching thousands of entrepreneurs in the arena of sales and marketing and business development and how to scale your business from zero to hero, I've discovered there are five huge, ginormous mistakes that most salespeople make that keep them from ever making a lot of sales. There's a giant. Yeah. And I'm going to help you avoid making those mistakes. There are five mistakes on this video. I'm going to talk to you about one of them. And this is probably the biggest one that really holds people back the most. And that is most people who are in sales think that selling is something you do to people and not something you do, not something you do for them. So they think that selling is something you do to people and not something you do for them. And I am here to let you know that is a mistake when we are selling and we are selling something that does people good, the reality is we are not doing something to them, we're doing something for them. And what you deserve to do is you deserve to learn how to have that feeling that I am serving these people at the highest level because the reality is if you don't, you're never going to feel good about it. See, it's interesting that all of us at some point in our lives got converted from being natural born salespeople to being natural born, I hate salespeople, right? And what do I mean by that? So if you think about it, people say, I'm not a natural born salesman, but the reality is everybody's a natural born salesman. When we get, everybody's a natural born salesperson. When you're born, you can sell your mom on waking up in the middle of the night and picking you up and playing with you for three hours, right? You, little kids, they come to their parents, can I have a cookie? Not right now, honey. They come back 30 seconds later, can I have a cookie now, right? And why? Because they don't have this negative neuro association to the idea of persuading somebody that I want what I want, right? And so l hating sales is something you have to learn. We're all natural born salespeople. And uh, I believe the number one reason people uh, think that selling is something you do to people instead of something you do for people is because most people only remember the bad sales experiences. Like, the, the good sales experiences are so good, they didn't feel like sales experiences, they just feel like you bought the thing that you wanted to buy. But a bad sales experience feels so yucky and so gross and so disgusting, you're like, I don't ever want anybody to do that to me again and I would certainly not want to do that to somebody else. But the reason you felt that is because the person who put you through that horrible sales experience, they were terrible at selling. And so they made you feel like running away. They made you feel like telling them to go fly a kite or other things. And I'm telling you, that is the problem. So what do you have to do? What you have to do is you have to realize that if you understand that selling is something you do for people, in fact, I can prove it to you. Everything that you've ever bought, everything you've ever bought without exception, somebody sold it to you. But some of the things you bought, you didn't feel like you were sold. You felt like you just bought it because it was your idea. For instance, this is one of the best selling products in the history of the world. It's called an iPhone, right? So I've got this iPhone in my hand and people say, well, but yeah, they don't really sell iPhones. I just bought an iPhone because I wanted it. You weren't born wanting an iPhone. You had to learn that somewhere. And Steve Jobs, God rest his soul, he created this environment this ecosystem where people become fanatical about everything he creates. And so he created a sales machine that helps people make a decision they already desire to make for their own reasons. So if you understand that, that selling is not convincing people to buy something they don't want, don't need, and can't afford, but selling is actually helping people make a decision they already desire to make for their own reasons. And see, when, you're, uh, when a salesperson is good, they only talk to the person they're selling to about that person's reasons. Like if I come to you and I'm telling you, like, please listen to my presentation. I've got to give so many presentations today. So will you do me a favor and listen to my presentation? That's a horrible thing to say. Well, I need to make my sales quota. Will you please buy one of these so I can make? That's a terrible thing to say. You're asking them to do it for you and they just don't like you that much. But don't feel bad, they don't like me that much either. So what you have to do is you have to figure out how can I help this person make a decision they already desire to make? See, most people erroneously think, mistakenly think that sales is convincing people to buy something they don't want, don't need, and can't afford.
But selling is not convincing. Selling is persuasion, and persuasion is the opposite. Raise your hand and say opposite, okay? Selling is the opposite of convincing. Persuasion is when I help somebody make a decision they already desire to make for their own reasons. Convincing is when I attempt to get you to make a decision that I desire you to make for my reasons. So let's focus on the person you're selling to, make the entire selling experience about them, and if you'll show up in the marketplace genuinely caring about people. I always, I always tell my clients, my coaching clients, I tell them the, the, the main like the main ingredient in a great sales experience, like in a great salesperson is, you gotta love the people you sell to. You want a master key? You want a master key that'll open up the door of a, a, a floodgates of sales for you? You gotta love the people you sell to so much you will only sell them things that do them good. That'll change your life for the rest of your life. It'll change your sales career. And if, if it's not good for somebody to buy it, you don't sell it to them just so you can make some money. And so, so when you wrap your mind around that and then you start thinking, okay, so how can I help somebody make a decision they already desire to make for their own reasons if I don't know what their reasons are? Bingo, you just won the cash prize. Why? Because you have to do discovery. You have to ask people questions before you can get good at selling them something. You have to ask them enough questions so that they can provide the content for the sale. You provide the context. What does that mean? Well, when I say they provide the content for the sale, that means somebody comes to you, if you sell insurance, you might ask them, so um, what are the goals for your family? What are the goals for your children? Like, what are the goals for your children's education? Uh, do you have retirement goals? You, you'll talk to them about all of the things that they desire, right? And then after you figure out what they want, you show them how what you have gives them everything they want. If you sell cars, so what, what has you in the market for a new car today? Right. And so they say, well, you know, our old car has a lot of miles on it. OK. And is there anything else that like, why does you, why do you need a new car? Just because a lot of lots of miles, because is it your car, still cars are old car still operating? OK. Yeah, it's operating. OK. But we just feel like we'll be our, our family will be safer if we get a car with lower miles. Oh, so safety is really important to you. Yes, yeah, safety is really important. to me. And you, you keep asking them questions and they keep giving you all of the things they're looking for. So when you present your offer. You present your offer in such a way that you're not just talking to them about your product. You're not just talking to them about all the pieces of your product. Well, you get this and this and this, and you get one in green and one in blue and two in red. You're not talking to them about your stuff. You're not talking to them about your person and how long your company's been in business. We've been in business for 75 years, and we focus on quality and genuine customer service. Like, that doesn't mean anything. That's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's nothing. It's like, so here's what you want to do instead. You want to gather from the person you're selling to all of the information about the things they are seeking, and then you want to show them, demonstrate to them that the thing that you have is going to be the shortest path. It's going to be like the ultimate shortcut to getting the outcome they desire. If you will learn to sell like that, it will change your life for the rest of your life. The wisest, wealthiest man who ever lived, King Solomon, he said, if you have something good, you have a moral obligation to do everything in your power to sell it to as many people as possible. Here's what it says. It says in Proverbs chapter number 11, verse number 26, it says, he that withholdeth the corn, it means grain, the people shall curse him, but blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. So wrap your mind around this. If you have something good, grain, something that's gonna sustain people's lives, if you have something good, you have a moral obligation to do everything in your power to sell it to as many people as possible. And if you don't sell it to them, they're gonna curse you. But if, they, if you do sell it to them, they're going to bless you. Go out, become a blessing, sell as much as you can to as many people as you can, but only to the people it serves, and it will change your business for the rest of your life. My name is Myron Golden. It's been nice talking to you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video so you can find out what the next mistake is. Don't miss it. It's going to be epic.